Greetings. This video features a step-by-step -step build showing you exactly how to make my air purifier. My design is a major improvement on others I've seen. In my design, a quiet, powerful fan is tied to a coroplast shroud with synthetic clothesline. The benefit here is that the shroud is integrated, allowing the fan to rest discreetly below the top of the filters. Just the weight of the fan pulls the coroplast shroud down onto the filter box, effectively sealing it without the need for tape. It can be easily removed simply by lifting. Once you learn how to build this type of design, you can easily pair pretty much any fan with any filter. Your imagination is the only limit. Welcome to the Healthy Home Guide. This is a place where I share practical, budget-friendly tips for creating a safe and healthy home, whether the word home refers to your house or your body. Please go ahead and like this video and subscribe because it causes the YouTube algorithm to shine its wandering eye upon me. So here are the reasons why my design is superior to the standard Corsi Rosenthal box or Comparetto cube that you've probably seen all over YouTube. One, my design is much quieter and more powerful than the Comparetto cube, which is annoyingly loud because it uses a box fan. You might be thinking, well, this is probably a, a good quiet box fan, right? No. I tried every box fan on the market and I feel that they're all far too loud to comfortably use in my living space. I mean, you can't even like talk over these things. Instead of a box fan, my design uses AC Infinity's Cloudline S12. It's far quieter and delivers more airflow. To prove it, I'll show you loudness and airflow comparison tests towards the end of the video. Two. Box fans only have three speeds and they're really not that different from each other. The AC Infinity has 10 speeds and they actually vary. Three, the standard Corsi Rosenthal box uses 20 by 20 inch filters, which causes it to take up far too much floor space. Nobody wants a wide air purifier and trust me, this thing is too wide. My design in this video uses 16 by 30 inch filters, which takes up a full square foot less floor space and yet has more overall surface area because it's taller. A quick aside, so I use Filtreat one inch thick MERV 13 filters specifically because the 3D Handyman channel tested a bunch of filters and these exhibited very high performance for the cost. Four, my design is much lower in VOCs because I sealed the filters together with hot glue, which is actually a recyclable thermoplastic that's a solid when it cools. Dried hot glue does not release VOCs, whereas tape, which uses adhesive that stays wet, does release VOCs. If you don't believe me, smell a dry stick of hot glue and then smell a strip of tape. Five, aesthetically my design looks neater. For that, it gets the girlfriend seal of approval. Quiet and sleek. Girlfriend approved. Six, the standard design doesn't have a fan shroud, so a portion of the air is sucked into and then blown out of the fan without even being filtered. More on that later. Now I'll briefly talk about how my air purifier design compares to the other air purifier designs I've seen on YouTube. So I've seen some brilliant builds on here, but the problem is most of them are way too loud and powerful to use in one's living space. They're more for like workshops. Another thing is that they require power tools to build, which I wanted to avoid if I could. And it turns out I could. I don't like unnecessary work. If you don't either, go ahead and like this video. Now, without further delay, here's how to build my air purifier. Okay, so put your first filter on the work table with the airflow arrow pointing up. And the filter that you're gonna glue to that is you're gonna put that on the right side of the first filter against the table with the airflow arrow pointing left. And go ahead and lay that second filter down and you're just gonna put hot glue on the left side of it as you see. And make sure that again, you lay that filter with the glue on it on the table to use the table as a guide. Now get behind that filter and feel with both your hands to feel that it's flush with the filter on the table. And wait a minute for the hot glue to dry while pressing both filters together. 
And we're gonna hot glue the crack where the filters meet each other just to make sure that no air escapes. Now wait another minute for the glue to dry and then rotate clockwise. Always rotating clockwise and always gluing the filter on the right, resting against the table, is the easiest way to get an even box. Airflow arrow left as usual, hot gluing on the left side of that unattached filter, resting it against the table as you glue and getting behind it and seeing if it's flush on both sides with your hands while pushing it in. Then waiting a minute for the glue to dry while you push it together. And this is the same thing you did before, just sealing that crack so air doesn't escape. And rotate clockwise as usual. And support that top filter as you see. Take your next filter and you're gonna glue it, you guessed it, on the right, resting it on the table with the airflow arrow pointing left. Same as always. And I'm sorry if I sound a little redundant, but I promise you, approaching it methodically is actually the least work and yields the best final product. And using your fingers to make sure it's flush on both sides, pressing it for a minute, hot gluing the crack, and once again, rotating clockwise and putting hot glue on that vertically oriented filter as usual. And you'll find that that vertically oriented filter actually just naturally rests against the table like all the others, and that you now have a square box. If you don't approach this with the method, then you may make the mistake of making a rectangular box instead of a square box. And there it is, there's the final product. And let's go zooming through it to the next step. So now you need to cover the top and you need a square of coroplast to do that. So it's very simple. Just use a utility knife to cut out a square. And your square is gonna be 16 and 7 eighths by 16 and 7 eighths. If you're also using these 16 by 30 inch filtreat filters like I am. So now we need to cut out a circle in the center of that square for our fan to blow through. So again, we have to find the midpoint to find the center. So 16 and 7 eighths is the diameter, and then a little less than eight and a half is the midpoint. So mark like a 16th of an inch before eight and a half. And do the same thing on the other side, slightly less than eight and a half. And this is where your drywall T-square comes in handy. So draw a line straight up from both of those points you marked, the midpoints, and where these midpoint lines intersect will be the center of the circle you're gonna draw that will have a diameter of 12 inches because that's the diameter of the fan's blades and it'll have therefore a radius of six inches. So set your compass to six inches and then find the center and just draw a circle. And now we're gonna cut the circle out with our utility knife. When cutting coroplast with a utility knife, you're not going to be able to cut through both layers of coroplast your first pass, okay? So just go really soft the first pass and only cut the first layer because that will enable you to do it accurately. Then on your subsequent passes, you can bear down harder and you'll cut through both layers no problem. And now just pop that circle out. It'll be satisfying for sure. And now you have a hole for your fan to blow through. Oh, speaking of the fan... Uh, what we have to do is get the stand off of the fan. So we just have to unscrew it. It's not too bad. So just unscrew that screw that you see. And then, you know, unscrew the next one. And just do the same on the other side. Just take both screws out. And the fourth screw. And that will enable you to just slide that stand right off the fan. Satisfying. So this fan comes with a wireless remote and this is the receiver to that remote. It's on the stand. So what we have to do is take that receiver off the stand. So unscrew those two screws that you see there. And now it's off the stand. And you don't have to do this, but the receiver is still attached to this metal back piece. So I figured I'd separate them with a small screwdriver by unscrewing the four screws in the back and reattaching that back cover to the receiver and popping those four small screws back in their holes. 
and screwing them back in. So now find that wire that's coming out of the fan motor and just connect it right into the receiver and your fan's ready to go. So put the coroplast on the table and take your fan and have your fan blowing into the hole. And make sure that it's even on all sides. So top, bottom, left, right, so now what we're gonna do is take synthetic clothesline and just tie the fan to the coroplast. So we'll have four ropes, one on the bottom here, coming through two holes, right here and here. Rope number two coming across the top, and third rope here, and a fourth rope here. So here, I'll show you a better angle so you can really see. So this is the reverse angle. Look at the bottom rope. It's gonna be coming through that hole and that hole, and it's gonna be tied to this bar. The top rope is gonna be coming through this hole and that hole, and it's tied to that bar. Third rope, that hole, that hole, tied to that bar. Fourth rope, that hole, that hole, and it's tied to that bar. Now I'm gonna take my screwdriver and mark where the holes are gonna be, just going through like the first layer of Coroplast only. You don't actually have to orient the holes like I did, by the way. You're welcome to do it in whatever way you want, but if you want to follow my way, I'd go back to the previous like top angle clip that I showed you before this one, and that way you can see all the holes at once and poke them with the screwdriver. So now that I've marked where the holes are gonna be with the screwdriver, now I can just take it and go all the way through. See that? Again, you don't have to tie the fan to the coroplast in the exact way I did. I can tell you my way works, but maybe there's a better way for you. And there are all our holes, so we should have eight holes. So now cut like a roughly three foot long piece of your clothesline and use your screwdriver to poke it through that hole that you see and thread it through the hole and then poke it through the other corresponding hole. And you can see that top angle to see exactly which holes you're gonna be threading the clothesline through. And then do the exact same thing, like take a three foot long piece of clothesline, poke it through both of the corresponding holes and thread it through. For this third piece of clothesline, you don't need it to be as long, so you can have it be like two feet and poke it through one of the holes and then the other with your screwdriver thread it through, and there you have it. So here's gonna be your fourth piece of clothesline, and again, it's gonna be shorter, like maybe two feet, uh, and poke it through both of the holes. And you can see that all of the clotheslines were threaded through the holes in the same direction. Again, if this is confusing to you, go ahead and reference that top angle. So take your fan and put it blowing into the hole, and make sure it's even on all sides, really line it up. What we're doing here is really simple. So we're just tying the fan to the coroplast with the clothesline. So thread the clothesline over that vertical metal bar and below the thick metal divider that divides the front and back halves of the fan. And now tie a square knot with the two ends of the clothesline. And I just wanted this to be really secure and like not go anywhere. I don't know if this is necessary, but I did it. I re-threaded one end of the clothesline over that vertical metal bar and below the divider so that our knot kind of goes around that vertical metal bar. See how the knot kind of like encompasses that vertical bar? If you don't feel like doing that, you might be able to get away with just tying the knot outside of the fan, like not re-threading it through. And let me know if that works for you. Eventually we're gonna be triple knotting this, but leave it as a single square knot for now and move on to your next clothesline, which in this video happens to be a shorter one. I chose to thread the clothesline through in that place because it's the furthest place from the fan blades. Tie a square knot. And if you're like me and you're paranoid about it shifting around, you can do what I previously did with the, with the last clothesline and re-thread it over that vertical bar. So you have the single square knot encompassing the vertical bar. And moving on to the next shorter clothesline, you're just gonna do the exact same thing. And again, if you're confused about like where to tie these bars, once again, refer to that top angle. As usual, now tie a square knot. And re-thread one end of that clothesline over the vertical bar as before. Of course, you can use your screwdriver to help you get it through. And there we have it, a single square knot encompassing it. And finally, you have your longer clothesline, and that will be the fourth one to tie and the final one.
threading it through in the same place as before, below that thick divider bar and above that vertical bar so we don't get in the way of the fan blades, poking it through with the screwdriver, tying a square knot, re-threading one end of the clothesline back over the vertical bar and through the other side. So you'll never have to do this again unless you build another one. Now, after making sure your fan's evenly situated over the hole, tie a double square knot. So another square knot on all four of the attachment points. When double knotting, most people automatically just tie a granny knot, which is not what you want to do. It's more likely to slip if you don't tie a double square knot instead. So I've included a video below showing you the difference between a granny knot and a square knot. And now for extra security, I'm doing a triple square knot on all four attachment points. And there you have it. Of course, now I'm trimming the excess clothesline just so it doesn't get like caught in the fan blades. Don't cut it too short because if you have to re-knot, that will be difficult. So you did it. Your fan is securely attached to the Coroplast. Well, I don't know if yours is, but, but mine is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nah, you probably did great if you followed my directions. So put the power cord in the filter box as you saw me doing and situate the fan evenly across the top of the filters. So with this design, the gravity of the fan just pulls the coroplast down onto the top of the filters and you don't really need tape or anything to form a decent seal. So lift the filter box and pull the power cord out from underneath. Create a little lip on the filter around the cord so air doesn't flow through there. Clean the spot on the floor where the filter is going to sit so it doesn't kick up any dust that's there. If you have a carpet, you might want to seal the bottom of your filter box with Coroplast. Next, here's some airflow and loudness data. As you just saw, I compared the AC Infinity 10 speed fan to a standard 3 speed box fan in terms of airflow and noise level. Notably, the AC Infinity fan at its highest speed is similar in net noise level to the box fan at its lowest speed, and yet the AC Infinity fan delivers twice the airflow. Another notable finding is that the AC Infinity fan delivers similar, if not a bit more, airflow as the box fan at half the net noise level. At its lowest speeds, the AC Infinity fan is whisper quiet. The box fan is loud at every speed. This Utilitech box fan I tested is also said to be one of the quieter ones, so other box fans may be even louder. For this next test, I have it on speed 4 of 10, which I find to be quiet and also delivers a good amount of airflow. Here's some toilet paper. Let's see if it sucks. Yup, totally. And how about down here? Yup, it sucks air through the filters. Good. Now what we don't want is for it to be sucking air through parts that are not filtered because that's just a waste of energy. And let's test on here. Is it sucking air through the top? Nope, it just looks to be blowing out of the fan. In contrast, the box fan definitely sucks air through places that aren't being filtered. Like, look at that. Totally, it's just sucking right in. And that air is not getting filtered. That's a waste of energy. Now let's talk about changing the filters because I know I'm going to get questions about this. So the combined surface area of the four 16 by 30 filters is so large that I don't imagine they'll become clogged with particulate very quickly. So you likely won't have to replace them very often. And I'm not sure exactly how often because I've only had this for a few months, but it doesn't seem dirty at all yet. So I'm tentatively thinking it may last one and a half years or so, maybe two. We'll see. All you have to do when changing the filters is lift the fan off of the filter box and glue together a new filter box, which should take less than 20 minutes. Then just put the fan back on the new filter box. Well, I hope I earned your subscription today. Anyway, I'm wondering, are you using an air purifier right now? If so, what brand is it? What don't you like about it? Also, let me know if you have any questions and please like this video and subscribe. Finally, thanks for watching.